Welcome to this worship service. My name is Pam Batson and I've invited Carolyn Bennett to assist me in this uh, leading of this service. We light the Christ candle to remind us that Christ is the light of the world and that in him there is no darkness. Our call to worship. Our call to worship today is responsive. You are invited to respond in the words in bold yellow type. Hear the voice of God. We come to worship the one who calls us. Hear the voice of God. We come to worship the one who speaks. Hear the voice of God. In the water of baptism, in the words of another, the gift of peace. Receive the Holy Spirit in the name of Christ. We wait on the Lord for our salvation. Let's come to God with our prayer of invocation. Let us pray. For our prayer of invocation today, we're going to do something that's a little bit different. Instead of praying a prayer, I invite you to sing the hymn, Breathe on me, breath of God, as a prayer. So let's join together in our prayer hymn as we sing, Breathe on me, breath of God. now come to God with our prayer of confession. As we come to a prayer of confession, when you hear the words, forgive us, O God, you're invited to respond with the words and touch us with your Holy Spirit. So let's pray. O God, we have just sung our prayer, breathe on me breath of God. But there are times when we are afraid to ask you to send your spirit upon us because we are not sure that we really want to change. Forgive us, O God, and touch us with your Holy Spirit. Sometimes, God, we look at ourselves and what we have done or have failed to do and find it difficult to believe that Jesus died on the cross for us so that we might know your love and forgiveness. Forgive us, O God and touch us with your Holy Spirit. Sometimes we compare ourselves with others or put ourselves down because we can't imagine that we have anything to offer to you or to others. Forgive us, O oh God, and touch us with your Holy Spirit. Sometimes, O oh God, we feel lost and abandoned because we've forgotten who we are that you have called us by name and that we are your children. Forgive us, O God, and touch us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the words of God who formed you. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You are mine. Therefore, because of God's promise to us, I can declare to you, our sins are forgiven. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let's join together in singing the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. Yeah. 
today we do a quantum leap. We jump nearly 30 years from the celebration of the birth of Jesus and the later visitation of the wise men to today's celebration, which is the baptism of Jesus. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptised, and when Jesus also had been baptised and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Let me set the scene for you. John the Baptist, the person whom, Jesus, whom God had called to prepare the people for the Messiah's arrival, was out by the Jordan River, telling those who came to hear him that they needed to repent of their sins in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. As a way of showing that they wanted to change, the people were being baptised with the baptism of repentance. It was into this scene that Jesus came. At first, it would appear that Jesus came to, be, to John to be baptised like any of the other people who had come to be baptised. But Jesus' baptism was different. After Jesus was baptised and was praying, something extraordinary happened. The heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my son, the beloved. With, who, with you I am well pleased. And it, was at, and it was from that point on that the direction of Jesus' life changed. I wonder if Jesus knew that his life would take such a dramatic turn when he went out to the Jordan River and went forward to be baptised by John. Sometimes I think that we can, we can presume that because Jesus was both human and divine, that Jesus knew all things without having to learn or have anything revealed to him. I wonder, did Jesus know the full extent of his ministry before he was baptised by John the Baptist and had spent time in prayer? Or had God gradually revealed this to him? And when the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended upon him and he heard the voice of God, this dramatic event was the revelation for Jesus and what God had called him to be and to do. When Jesus came to be baptised, he lived in Nazareth, was a carpenter by trade, and we presumed to live with his family. From, that from the time of his baptism, Jesus would be an itinerant preacher. He would move from place to place, telling people about God and God's ways. He did not necessarily know where he would sleep each night, nor did he work in his trade. He knew that from that point on, he would be God's messenger to the people. To enable him to be God's messenger, Jesus was given the Holy Spirit. Not only would Jesus be a teacher, but he would be also be a healer, someone who would challenge the Jewish authorities, someone who would challenge the way people lived and responded to others, someone who would challenge people's understanding of who God is and what God requires someone who would cross boundaries and befriend those 
whom society had marginalised and he would change their lives. Because Jesus' words and actions were a threat to the Jewish authorities, he would also be condemned to death and killed. Jesus' baptism was a pivotal point in Jesus' life. At his baptism, when Jesus heard the voice from heaven say, You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. I believe it was a form of affirmation for Jesus. It was from that moment on that his whole direction in life changed. He no longer was a carpenter in Nazareth. He was to fulfill his role as the Messiah, the one sent by God to save God's people. It's through Jesus' coming, living and sharing with us the truth about God and who God is and what God desires and the giving of the gift of the Holy Spirit that we are enabled to know the way God wants each one of us to live. And just like God affirmed whom Jesus was by naming him as God's son at his baptism, God also names those who follow him, the, who follow the ways of God as God's sons and daughters. And just as Jesus was given the Holy Spirit at his baptism, God gives us the Holy Spirit to enable us to live the way God wants us to live. Amen. Let's now sing the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, and let's sing it as a prayer.
life-changing God. At his baptism, the focus of Jesus' life changed from the Nazarene carpenter to the one who, anointed with the Holy Spirit, brought good news to the marginalised, challenged the authorities, and showed people the way you want us to live. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit to us, and we pray that through your Spirit, you might touch and change us and others to live the way you want us to live. Jesus was mindful of those who were marginalised and in need, and so we bring our prayers to you for others. Compassionate God, we pray for all those people who are marginalised throughout the world, those in prison, refugees, the under or unemployed, the elderly, people from a different culture or faith background, those who are differently abled, May they know the touch of your hand upon their lives. Loving God, we pray for those who are ill, those who are grieving the loss of a loved one or friend, those who are lonely, and those who are separated from their families due to coronavirus, work or broken relationships. May they know the touch of your hand upon their lives. God who provides, we pray for all those who do not have adequate food, housing, clean water, medical supplies, or opportunities for education. We also think of those throughout the world who have been devastated by natural disaster, war, or greed. May they know the touch of your hand upon their lives. We also thank you for all those people who provide for us in some way, emergency service personnel, medical providers, educators, retail providers, those who maintain our roads and other infrastructure, tradies, government officials who try to keep us safe, and of course, our families. May they know the touch of your hand upon their lives. We pray all this in the name of the baptised Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. And we sing together, May the mind of Christ my Saviour. And our word of mission and blessing. 
God who has come in Jesus Christ goes with you into this week, caring for you in every situation, identifying with you in need, empowering you to live humbly and joyfully the life of the kingdom. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be be with with you you now now and and always. always. Amen. Amen.